We are so close to the celebration of Christmas. We are in our fourth week of Advent, preparing for the holy event to fill our lives and to change the world. My name is Hilary Chrisley, and I am the pastor of Glendora United Methodist Church. We are so glad to be joining with you as we listen for God's invitation to join God in setting things to rights. I invite you to listen for how God is calling you to live in the divine love and to share that love with others. Together, let us worship. Advent is about love. We are social beings. We long for each other's company. We long to share some part of ourselves, to be understood, to invite others into our lives. We all long to lessen the loneliness that lurks in the background of even our most crowded moments. We desperately want to be known, to be understood, to belong, to find some kind of acceptance just as we are, some intimacy of soul and so we reach out with fragile, delicate efforts of love. Love and the vulnerability that comes with it can be the riskiest business of all. We can hurt each other, hearts can be broken, rejection can come. If you try to belong, you can be excluded, and that can hurt more than being alone. But there is no love without such risks. Like hunger and thirst, the longing for love is implanted deeply within us, and God offers us many opportunities to care, to reach out, and to love. Love is always a risk, but it is a risk upon which the very heart of our life depends. To love is to touch the heart of God. To look into the eyes of another and recognize our common soul is to see the face of God. Even to feel the ache of a heart broken for love is to discover God's grace. Let us pray. Your love, O God, is great, and the risks you have taken were supreme. Teach us the way of love and help us to walk in it. From the depths of your creating love, you made us in your image. Teach us the way of love and help us to walk in it. In the goodness of your covenant, you created us in a community of your love. Teach us the way of love and help us to walk in it. In the fullness of time, you sent us Jesus, a man of love that risked all for the sake of the world. Teach us the way of love and help us to walk in it. In your resurrection power, you have revealed your love to all humanity. Teach us the way of love and help us to walk in it. Help us, O oh God, to reveal your love as we discover anew the tremendous power of the Christmas story and meet again the Christ child, born anew among us. Amen and amen.
on that Christmas. Yeah, on love, ye love divine. Love was born at Christmas. Star and angels gave the sign. Worship we the Godhead, love incarnate, love divine. Worship we our Jesus, but where with forsaken sign, love shall be our token, love be yours and love be mine, love to God and neighbor, love for plea and gift and sign. Our Old Testament reading is from Micah chapter 5, verses 2 through 5a. As for you, Bethlehem of Ephrathah, Though you are the least significant of Judah's forces, one who is to be a ruler in Israel on my behalf will come out from you. His origin is from remote times, from ancient days. Therefore, he will give them up until the time when she who is in labor gives birth. The rest of his kin will return to the people of Israel. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, they will dwell secure because he will surely become great throughout the earth. He will become one of peace. Please join me in the litany of looking forward. We look forward to seeing a new star appear in the sky, calling those far off to draw near to you. Lord Jesus, draw us to you. We look forward to the familiar stable scenes, their mangers standing empty, waiting to receive you. Lord Jesus, come to us anew. We look forward to hearing again the angel singing, glory to God and peace to all the earth. Lord Jesus, let us take up their song. We look forward to seeing shepherds and kings alike poor and humble, noble and wealthy, all bowing before you. Lord Jesus, unite us in worship. We look forward to remembering a humble girl with an ordinary background chosen to bring your hope into the world. Lord Jesus, bring new hope through us. We look forward to a child wrapped in linen, lying in a manger, weak and helpless, small and completely reliant on others. Lord Jesus, teach us to depend on you. We look forward to seeing, hearing, and knowing afresh how you, infinite and incomprehensible God, freely entered your creation, becoming humble and tangible, so that we might freely enter your presence. Lord Jesus, we look, we wonder, and we worship. Amen. Our first gospel reading from the book of Luke, chapter one, verses 26b through 38. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee, to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. The virgin's name was Mary. When the angel came to her, he said, Rejoice, favored one, the Lord is with you. She was confused by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said, Don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. 
He will be great and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David his father. He will rule over Jacob's house forever and there will be no end to his kingdom. Then Mary said to the angel, how will this happen since I haven't had relations with a man? The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come over you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the one who is to be born will be holy. He will be called God's son. Look, even in her old age, your relative Elizabeth has conceived a son. This woman who was labeled unable to conceive is now six months pregnant. Nothing is impossible for God. Then Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me just as you have said. Then the angel left her. We long for the time when the meek shall inherit the earth, and all who hunger and thirst after justice shall be satisfied. And we believe that despite the persistence of evil, now is always the time when more good can be done, and we can make a difference. Let us offer our gifts of time, money, energy, and skills to make that difference. May it be so, through the offering of these gifts, and the offering of our lives. Amen. Praise God from open blessings flow. Praise God all creatures Our second reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 46 through 55. Mary said, With all my heart I glorify the Lord. In the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God my Savior. He has looked with favor on the low status of his servant. Look, from now on, everyone will consider me highly favored because the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. He shows mercy to everyone from one generation to the next who honors him as God. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. He has pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty-handed. 
He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, remembering his mercy, just as he promised to our ancestors, to Abraham and Abraham's descendants forever. Mary, Mary, why are you singing? Child, you should be weeping. You're pregnant, betrothed to an honorable young man who knows this is not of his doing. Why aren't you sobbing on your knees, crying inconsolably? Such a child yourself. Perhaps you sing because you are so young, but even youth know when they have stepped over some line. You've seen how people treat those who break the social mores, the, the raised eyebrows, the turned heads, chuckled whispers behind cupped hands. You will be shunned at best, stoned at worst. Have you noticed how the nice girls aren't quite so friendly anymore? Poor girl, have you any idea where all of this will lead you? Away from home from your confinement, next door to in an inn of rowdy strangers, a crude shelter for your first birthing. Poor little one, little do you know about that not so merry chase your boy child will lead you on as he goes about his father's business. Beginning at the temple in Jerusalem, it will end at Golgotha. Perhaps it is best you do not know the future. Sing on, young innocent. But Mary, have, have you any idea what, what the words mean? How radical your lyrics are? What makes you think you would be noticed by the mighty Yahweh, let alone magnified? Be careful who hears you. This could be blasphemy. Naive, childish boasting is one thing, little maid, but singing revolutionary lyrics in Roman territory is quite another. Your song moves from flirting with sacrilege into a, a whole new arena of politically incorrect and inflammatory statements. You have entered a land where few maidens dare to tread, the land of politics and economics. You sing, you sing of God's strength, scattering the proud. Mary, the proud don't like to be scattered, haven't you heard? You sing that God has put the mighty down from their thrones. Now this might be good news to the powerless, but not to the mighty. How long do you think rulers will let you sing songs like this? The hungry have been filled with good things and the rich have been sent away empty. The rich don't like to be empty, Mary. They won't sing along. Perhaps you should stop singing, girl. This, this, should this song capture the imagination of the poor ones, they will turn the world upside down. Mary, for your sake and the child's, keep a low profile. Think a minute. Is this the kind of mother you want to be setting this example? Will you rock your baby to sleep with lullabies like this and make him radical too? What if he remembers and teaches others and it, and it catches on and on and on so that 2,000 years later, the melody lingers? What is there within the human heart that sings such a song when the news of this present world contradicts good tidings? I cannot even begin to define the meaning of great joy. Perhaps it is the power of expectation, having something to dream in the darkness. Birth is like that. And your song of birth of a, a miracle incapable of rational description is a song staccatoed by the kick of tiny feet, a song filled with hope for a child yet unseen. Oh, Mary, how desperately we need your song. We need your song in, in hospital rooms and state rooms, in kitchens and in outer space. Your faith reminds us of God's timeless refrain that God is vital, active today, tomorrow. God loves justice, blesses the merciful, feeds the hungry. God comes to us unconditionally, unpredictable, unbelievable. God comes to us, to us poor ones in the middle of tax season, in all seasons. God comes to us in Jesus. This is the song. God is with us.
then and now, and yet to be. And because God is with us, there is a loving that pulls us forward to something unseen, something called hope. Mary, your song resets us. In you, we can see who we are, the hope, the peace, the joy, the love, are who we are, God's own. We are naturally like this. Its resonance is in us, a love made flesh a powerful love in your son. For Mary, you sing of your son. You sing of Jesus before his birth, but, but there's no question in your mind he will be born. Mary, you sing of God's justice before all righteousness even reigns throughout the world, but there is no question it will come to be. Mary, your song is a now and has been and evermore shall be song. God has already shown strength and scattered the proud and put down the mighty and exalted the lowly and filled the hungry. This, is, this has happened and yet it hasn't happened yet. This is and yet it is yet to be. We, like you, are waiting. We're seeing. We're seeing the real world, but no, we sing anyway. Singing with those whose spiritual eyes are yet to be opened because we know God believes in vision. We are waiting with you, hearing the world, but singing anyway on behalf of those whose spiritual ears are yet to be unstopped because we know God will be heard. You, Mary, are brave and faithful and filled. Your song calls up in us so that somehow in this sad and muted world, we are called to speak. No, no, we are called to sing on behalf of those who cannot sing such a song. We are to sing because we believe God wills us to harmonize with the angels those old familiar tidings of great joy and proclaim God is in this world here and now with us. So sing, Mary. Go ahead, sing and bless us, bless God with your song, amen. Oh, oh, oh. 
Please join me in prayer. Great power of the universe who in unfathomable love works mighty deeds from fragile possibilities. We gather here to know you more. We listen in your presence. We listen for you. Extend our listening God to hear the song of truth and hope that you are so lovingly singing. Extend our listening God to sense the motion of a future you are moving in our midst, a future of a world put right. Extend our listening God that we may receive and affirm and listen with the eager ears and eager hearts. Let us listen fully and deeply for the hope you are preparing. Let us greet your hope with blessed assurance. Let us listen fully and deeply for the peace you are preparing in us. Let us listen deeply to the joy ringing in us. Let us listen fully to the love you place in us. Extend our listening to the deepest reaches of our own souls. Extend our listening through the cares that teach us to bring everything we have to you that is on our hearts. Extend our listening through the financial worries, the concerns with our health, our worry for loved ones whose lives are straying out of control, our angers, aggravations, our inundation with activity. Extend our listening into all that we bring today to hear, hear there the transforming truth about our own lives. Extend our listening until we listen with all that we are, our, our whole beings. Extend our listening until we become the voice that speaks as Mary to say, my soul magnifies God and my spirit rejoices. May the listening of our souls enlarge until we truly hear you from unexpected places in the farthest reaches of the earth and the most remote territories of our own souls. For all our hopes and dreams are met in your love and so we can together go into your future as we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me in the response to the word. Our souls magnify the Lord, and our spirits rejoice in God our Savior. For God looks with favor upon us and sees our unrealized potential. In the tradition of Mary and all who have said yes to God, we stand here today to add our assent to theirs. Like Mary, we feel overwhelmed. We wonder if we are worthy or capable of following the calling. Like Mary, we have our questions and we will not be afraid to ask them. Like Mary, we will hear and ponder the assurance that God will empower us. Like Mary, we will strive to say, let it be with us according to your will to whatever God is inviting of us at this time in our lives and relying on God's grace, we say yes. My soul gives glory to my God, my heart out its praise. God lifted up my loneliness in many marvelous ways. My God has done great things for me. Yes, holy is this name. All people will declare me blessed and blessed. Sings they shall. 
love. Let love live in your heart and share the love of Christ with all you meet. Share love by loving those you see regularly. Start by loving your community. Share love by loving those you do not know. How can your loving actions affect the rest of God's creation? Share love by praying for our world. In this Advent season, we need to see, feel, and share love. As you go out into the wonder of God's creations, share love, joy, peace, and hope with all those you meet. Amen. <laughs> 